Hello gamers, Matt Lemke here with True Gamer Goggles, Gen Con 2012 with Lyle from Privateer Press. We're going to talk a little bit about Level 7 and the Gargantuans that are coming out this fall. How are you guys doing? Okay, Lyle. I understand Level 7 is a horror, science fiction board game. Will it lean more towards Doom or Resident Evil? Um, if I had to choose between Doom or Resident Evil, it's definitely more Resident Evil. Uh, so you, it's it's a survival horror kind of game. Think think alien conspiracy theories, uh, sort of government cover-ups, uh, Area 51, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, when we look at the board game, what was, what is the basics for the mechanics of the game? Uh, well, well, there are a few different mechanics going on. It's a, a semi-cooperative survival horror game, so so you're working together with the other players against the game, and so the game has its own sort of AI-driven mechanic to it. Um, but one of the big resources in the game is fear. So you're managing fear uh, to perform actions, and uh, the fear also determines how, uh, how aggressively the aliens hunt you. So... Um, you have a track between 1 and 8 for your fear level. The higher it is, the more your adrenaline is pumping, so the, the stronger and faster you become. But the lower it is, um, the calmer you are and the more clearly you can think, so the better you are at intelligence checks. Okay, okay. Now, it's pretty obvious to me that it's a unique license to private to your press. That's right. The question I have is, what kind of uh, future does it have? Are they already working on expansions? Um, well, we definitely envisit, uh, envision it as more than just one game. It's not just Level 7 Escape. Uh, Level 7 is a whole IP and world for us to explore through, through various other board games and through other media projects. <laughs> oh, that's a new spin. So, will these board games be compatible with each other? Um, in some cases, they may be. Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. And you may see expansions to some games, but we're also looking at uh, other standalone games as well. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'm kind of baffled by that, actually. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to the Gargantuans. Okay. Uh, basic specs on the Gargantuans. Uh, roughly, how tall are they? Uh, they are probably five to six inches tall. So the base on them is 120 millimeters, which is uh, pretty much the same size as a CD. So um, they're they're about as big around as, as uh, my palm right here. A little bit bigger than my palm. Uh, CDs, my <laughs> my palm here. <laughs> so probably about this big around, and they sit about this tall. Okay. And uh, some of them get even much larger. Um, so uh, the uh, the Everbright Gargantuan may be about that big. So they're pretty sizable models. They're definitely centerpiece models for your army. And uh, for their quote-unquote weapon systems, are they going to work primarily the same way Colossus's work, having a left side or right side, or? Um, they're a little bit different. They do have left side uh, and right side weapon systems, so uh, your left fist can attack your left arc, your right fist can attack your right arc, but they don't have uh, the two damage grids that the uh, Colossals do, so they don't have a left side damage grid and a right side damage grid. Instead, they have a much larger spiral. That makes sense, because it, yeah, I forgot about the spiral when I wrote this. Uh, so, will they be like FA2, or how will they be restricted in the game? They'll be FA2, yes. FA2? And... Will they like generate their own fury or do anything special with the fury? Uh, they generate their own fury the same way war beasts do. Um, so uh, when when they're when they're forced by their their war caster, when they're by their warlocks, uh, they will be generating fury. And uh, for example, the, I can't remember the name. I think it's the troll. It's a troll, right? Uh, the troll blood mountain king. Yeah, roughly. Uh, in comparison to other beasts in the game, how much fury does a tro does the big troll generate? Um, he has, a, I think he has a max fury stat of 5, but I'm not positive of that. Uh, he has a fairly low threshold, though, so uh, you can load him up with fury, but he becomes hard to control. Uh, that was my next question. How hard are they to control? <laughs> so they get hard to control fast. Right. Okay. And uh, what kind of effects might they bring to the game? Um, well, they're similar to, to uh, other war beasts in that they all bring their own unique animuses or animi, and uh, the animi in this case can be uh, pretty pretty powerful animi. So uh, you'll just have to wait to see exactly what those are. And will they basically 
work the same way in game that Colossus work, or will they have a more unique set of rules? They are. Uh, you can definitely think of, of them as sort of the uh, the companion model to War Machine's uh, Colossal. So in a lot of ways, they're very similar. And uh, if you had to guess, what is the expected release order of the models? If I had to guess, uh, I would say it would probably be uh, the Mountain King first, and then the World Wrath, um, and then. The Mammoth or the Archangel, I'm not sure which one comes next. Probably Archangel, then Mammoth, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, all right, gamers, this is Matt Lemke with Lyle from Privateer Press at Gen Con 2012. And we're going to see if we can get some product pictures here for you in a second. All right, thank you.